Now, as I mentioned, we do also offer the service catalog, which is a very uh, sort of critical piece to, to many organizations today. And uh, in Footprints, this is a very icon-driven, friendly front end, which truly guides the customers into what's available to them. They can go through and peruse, if you will, these different options um, based on their user permissions. So you are able to dictate who has access to what. And similar to our earlier discussion, we're going to go ahead and request Adobe Reader. And again, we have some specifics about the potential cost, what the service levels are going to be, maybe what the expectations from a delivery time would be. This is fully configurable, so you can include as much or as little data here as you might like. And then we can go ahead and request the service, which again brings up a predefined templated ticket, quick, easy, painless for the customer to get these requests into the system. Now before we sort of look at the next stages to this, I did just want to look a little bit deeper at the service catalog and some of those other options that are available. So within that request there, the customer will have the opportunity to go into any of those different pages um, or sections, if you will, based on those icons. And again, this is all fully configurable. What you're seeing in large part here is what we will auto-create leveraging the ITSM-driven template. But this could also be a way that customers can engage some of those other workspaces. So I could come in and request a uh, onboard <clears throat> excuse me, for a new full-time in-office employee. And again, it outlines everything that they're going to get, the expected costs, what the SLAs may be, what the total cost of this package is. And this then can create not just one request, but could create multiple requests. So let's go ahead and request this service as well. Now we're going to see some slightly different fields, and again, that's how our template was designed. Within the flexibility of this form, not only can we drive certain fields here, again, based on our template, and we'll hire Mary Smith, and we'll get a ton of notice. She's going to start today for us. But if I select that Mary is coming on board from account services, this gives me some add-ons that she is potentially eligible for based on her job role. So again, this is beyond the fact that she's going to get her desktop with her dual monitors and her voicemail and whatever else was in that listing. If she's part of our executive community, she's also eligible to get a BlackBerry and a laptop. So we can, again, select different options here as to what we might want to engage for this new user based on this information. And as we submit this request, again, this is not just going to create a standard request. This is going to create a master issue with a series of subtasks, which of course can be sequenced or run parallel, whatever makes sense, and you can define that within the template. But then more importantly, it's also going to run through a business rule. And due to the fact that we selected this additional option, it's going to create yet another task. So again, it took about 20 seconds there to load because it's not just building one, it's building many requests. Now finally, <clears throat> at any point, a customer could simply say, I just want to turn in a brand new break fix. And actually a lot of organizations that I talk to, uh, they tell me what they would want to do is just simply upload a new icon here, which is I broke something icon, which basically will bring up the same blank request form when they request the I broke something service as we're seeing here. And we could simply default that to be set as a failure, just taking again away one click that a customer may need to, to enter. Now, even from a break-fix standpoint, though, customers can have access to templates. Again, we want to try to make this whole process as simple as, as possible for them. So we'll just have a simple keyboard issue there. As I alluded to earlier, we do integrate with Active Directory or any LDAP source, so contact information can come in. Um, this is a real-time lookup. There is no import that's happening. So this is the most recent information that's available in AD relating to Sally here. Now, I alluded to this again during the slide deck, but all of the fields that are being displayed within the workspaces are completely configurable. So any data points, any choices that you want, you're going to be able to tailor around your unique business environment. As we can see, we of course support cascading field sets to guide our customers through the next set of logical choices. And as we saw with our other example, again, any point we can in essence jump sideways. So in this example of someone saying they can't access the Internet, maybe they can get internal, they can't get outside, this is then asking them some very specific and targeted questions so that we can, number one, get as much data as possible from the customer so that we can reduce the cycles level one might be spinning now asking questions. We can get this from the start to get to faster time to resolution. 
and maybe even then drive this to level two earlier because we already know that some of this baseline data has happened and the system could automatically do that. But also, again, in this case, maybe we can even try to get them to do some more of that self-help so that they can resolve the issue and not even need to go forward and submit our request here. But in our example, we're going to have a keyboard issue. I'll keep this simple. And then we're going to have a good number of tickets that we can work through on the technician side here. We'll put in our description. Um, I should also mention the idea of copying someone. So if you want to allow your users to CC you or copy someone else, you can certainly do that. And we see there we got the on-screen confirmation again. And as all these tickets are being created, we're going to send follow-up email to the customer with as much or as little data as you'd like, including active hyperlinks back to the portal. We do have complete bi-directional email management. So if your customers really aren't using the portal today, this is an area you're not ready to go to, and you're just using email, shared mailbox, whatever it is, again, Footprints can be monitoring email. Each workspace will have its own incoming email address. We'll monitor that. We'll grab those requests. We'll automatically generate the tickets for them. As I mentioned, we'll send outgoing mail under any point uh, that you might like. And most importantly, um, if a customer replies to any of those notifications, those replies will also be appended to the request. So let's look at our Adobe example first. And here we can see that Sally, again, does have edit and closure capabilities, your choice if you want to allow for that to happen. And we can see that this immediately went into an approval process. So Footprints does have a, a complete approval engine available, Footprints Change Manager, and this will allow for you to define criteria that states authorizations need to happen. In this example, what I was looking for was a new request, so something either in the status of request or open, that has been associated to this particular service. When we see those criteria, and maybe it's also looking for some information relating to classifications, again, every data point can drive the assignment, or, I'm sorry, the approval. But when we see this happen, this then immediately goes into an approval process. And within this process, I've built a rule that says, well, what I want you to do when my criteria is met is look in this field. And whoever we brought in from Active Directory dynamically make that person the eligible approver. So with one simple checkbox, you can account for an infinite number of potentially ever-changing scenarios. Uh, again, just making AD be your single source of truth. They have to keep that AD up to date. Now Craig has a few options. Obviously, he and Sally are both in sales. He's not living and breathing in footprints. But he's going to receive a notification letting him know that there is an approval that's pending. In this similar example that I received here for uh, the BlackBerry that we requested for our new hire, I can review the information and put an X in the box to approve or disapprove, and my vote is done. I don't have to log into the interface. I don't have to do anything. I can do that from my smartphone. I can do it from my iPad. I can do it from my desktop mail, and my vote's been recorded. Now the other option, of course, is that we can do it through the interface. And I'm just going to refresh my other tab where I am logged in as Craig, and we can see here our request for Adobe. Now from within this request, Craig can see the specifics. This could be hierarchical, so once Craig says yes, we might need further levels of authorization. Those would be identified here as our next phases. We're keeping this one fairly simplistic. So we can go ahead and approve that, and we're going to see a few things happen. One is, obviously, the customer will get notified. So Sally will know that her request has been granted. We're going to give her her application or her iPhone or her BlackBerry, whatever she was asking for. So she's alerted that we're now sort of in the next step of the process. But more importantly, and I'm going to click on my first tab, this is where I'm logged in as an agent, which of course is anyone assigned to any requests, anyone who's going to do administration or need full levels of reporting. When we scroll down a little bit here, we see that that request that Sally had created um, is now in the status of follow-up. So it, uh, I'm looking at the wrong one. I was like, wait, that wasn't 22 hours ago. There we go now. <laughs> it's in the status of follow-up. It's been assigned out to our application support group. Maybe part of our process is after we install software, we, again, want to do a little uh, customer satisfaction increase there, so we want to do a remote session with them and show them what's available. Now the auto assignment, that's another important piece. We have multiple ways that we can assign a request. In this case, based on how it was classified, when the approval was granted, we said now to assign to this particular group. When we assign to a group, we could notify everyone, me, Brian, Fritz, we all got notified, first available can come in and take this issue. Or you can do round-robin assignment. 
So this will allow for you to do more even distribution of the workload and prevent from cherry picking of the work orders. You know, in the uh, infrastructure team, which I'm a part of, Larry always t tends to take the easy issues and leaves anything that's going to be more than 15 minutes for the rest of the group. So we alleviated that problem by enabling that round robin. We can take that to the next step in that I also have access to check availability. So let's go back and use my infrastructure team example. I can personally come in, and if I am going to make a decision who can have this, I can check their availability. And here we can see I was committed to some earlier appointments. I was helping someone with an email problem earlier today. But I also can allow for the system, when leveraging around Robin, to take this information into account. So for simple example, between 10 and 11.30 today, I was pulled out of the rotation because of the fact I'm committed to an appointment. Footprints knew that. So if I'm going to be out of the office, I can simply flag myself as unavailable, and it will pull me out automatically with no administrative overhead. And we can synchronize with um, an Outlook calendar or a Lotus Notes calendar. That's a piece of the Footprints mobile that's available that, that will allow for any appointments in Outlook um, or Footprints to be visible and editable on the other side. So we can have some collaboration of that information here for you as well. Okay. Now one of the key things that I wanted to look at though in the history is number one, we have our voting history. So at any point if anyone questions why we purchased something, why someone had something, why did we authorize a firewall change to happen, we have time date user stamp leveraging the approval management engine that's available within the solution. And also if we look at the complete history here, and we scroll down a little bit, again we have obviously a complete dialogue of everything that transpired, including where the approval that happened. And here you can see that as that happened, the software was queued up to be deployed onto the machine automatically so that it would go ahead and run that, in, that installation without IT needing to touch the ticket. Now in our example, again, I'm having this go into a um, follow-up status, but it could have absolutely closed the ticket and no one has to be involved at all. So how did it know what asset? Part of what happens when we do this submission is we take the information from the contact data, including this S. Winters, which we're getting again from AD, and then we do a match to see where Sally the last logged in, what device rather is Sally the last logged in user to, and it automatically builds that association. And from here again, I can launch the remote session, I could manually deploy some software, I can ping the machine, run an on-demand audit, view all of the specifics in terms of hardware and software information that's deployed, lots of potential opportunity that's available, leveraging this very, very tight integration between the solutions. Now also as we're taking any actions, whether I'm launching a remote session or I'm deploying software, all of that information is being recorded. And for time's sake though, I'm just going to show you a past example. Everything is being recorded in the history. So from an accountability standpoint, you have a single running entry that will dialog and log everything that happened, when the customer submitted the request, how someone was assigned, when it was approved, when the software was successfully installed, the fact that a 47 session remote session 47 second remote session took place with me and the customer at 2.50 p.m. And then the fact that this closed based on a business rule due to inactivity. So again, complete running dialogue of every field value change, everything that's happening, so you have a complete accountable record as to what we did to service that customer and what was done physically on that box. Now let's look again at our break fix ticket here. And we can see a lot of information we didn't have visible as a customer. Obviously this is by design. With that drag and drop form designer, you're able to dictate not just what fields you want and what choices you want, but also who should see them and when. So we can enforce best practice. When we take a ticket to close or resolve, we now want to enforce population of root cause and resolution. And again, all of this is done on the visual form designer leveraging drag and drop capability um, and point and click rules that you may want to build out. In addition, the, cust uh, sorry, the technicians can also have full integration with knowledge management. So right from here, I can search the knowledge base. And this is by default showing me, sorry, there we go, I'm just trying to make this full screen for us, um, showing me the only two articles that could potentially resolve this issue. So it's a very efficient lookup. It passes along our ticket classification into our knowledge base classification. 